Very good morning or afternoon or evening, depending when this um, clip here is going to be released, and also, of course, depending on where you are on this globe. Because the global meta retreat will be attended by people not just here in Australia, but also around the whole world. My name is Bhante Bodhidharja. I um, had the privilege to um, meet Ajahn Brahm and to ordain under Ajahn Brahm. Uh, in 2010 I became an Anagarika, in 11 a novice and in 2012 a uh, fully ordained bhikkhu. So it's wonderful to practice together, to sit together on this occasion of the 70th birthday of our dear teacher, friend, guide, Ajahn Brahm, who has given so much. Over his entire life, even as a layperson, he was always very giving. But even more so now as a monastic, and as a monastic, he's able to give something that other people are not able to give. He is a refuge for us all, as the Dhamma is a refuge, the Sangha is a refuge, Ajahn Brahm is part of the Sangha, of course, and then the Buddha is our ultimate refuge, the person who has realized Nibbana has taught us how to reach or how to, well, reaching is one of those things, you know. We actually let go, we relax into the way things are, into emptiness, into gratitude, into kindness, into compassion, into all these beautiful things that have been taught by the Lord Buddha, but not also, uh, but not only taught by him, but they have been lived by him. And it is rare to find good monks, good nuns in this world who have lived the Dhamma to such an extent as our dear teacher Ajahn Brahm. And yeah, just living with uh, such a being like Ajahn Brahm for so many years, you do see him in many, many different situations. You do see him over a long period of time. You see him through the good times and you see him through the um, difficult times. And uh, as you can see here, I'm recording this at uh, Kusula Hermitage, one of the branch monasteries of Ajahn Brahm with, you know, just a simple white background and um, on a laptop. So very often in life, we just have to make do with whatever is available, uh, whatever is available to us in life at that present moment. And that's also one of the things that I've learned and seen um, through being together with Ajahn Brahm for such a long time. We always have this um, dream or wish that life should be perfect. And when it is perfect, then we can relax, then we can let go, then we can practice. But actually, it's the relationship we have towards life, towards other people, towards our bodies, towards our mind. And that's when this very, very important um, quality of metta and karuna comes into play. So we have 
unconditional kindness. And the unconditionality is something which is so important. And it's something we see in day-to-day -day life. Sometimes there is very inspiring moments. But when you come across beings that have been practicing for decades, that are good monastics, they radiate these qualities quite naturally. And it is a privilege to be in their presence. It is a privilege to be connected to them and uh, to be able to ride on the wave, so to speak, to be um, protected and guided by them. So that is the kindness aspect. But the kindness aspect always also comes with the aspect of compassion. Because, as I said, life is not perfect. We are not perfect. Samsara is not perfect. So we need compassion to be able to understand and to deal with the suffering that arises in life, with the suffering that life intrin intrinsically is, that existence brings um, into being. And we have seen that in our world, of course, now as well, with all those things that are happening globally um, to many, many people at the same time. Very often they are much more hidden. Uh, now they have come much, much more to the surface. And uh, that way we are confronted with things that we usually are not confronted with. It is a bit more unpleasant, I guess, at the moment. And it is also more challenging. But I hope that we all can rise to this occasion and learn from it and grow from it. And take Ajahn Brahm as our guiding star. He has gone through so many years of lay life, first of all, and then much, much more years of monastic life. And uh, he wasn't just, you know, meditating somewhere in the jung jungles of Thailand by himself. He has um, built monasteries. He has ordained so many people. I think one of the last counts, I remember, we keep a record and write these things down. And I think it was 77 people uh, or something around that uh, number there. Uh, of people who have been ordained by Ajahn Brahm, who have been trained by Ajahn Brahm. And when you do ordain under someone, you say, I become your burden and you are my burden. But Ajahn Brahm very often says that because he has ordained so many people, he has so many burdens. And the people who are ordaining only have that one burden, their preceptor to care for, to look after, to send their best wishes. And specifically for this birthday now, we wish to extend our gratitude and our metta and our karuna. And the gratitude part is the um, mudita. We rejoice. We rejoice in the beautiful qualities that have grown in someone like Ajahn Brahm over his entire life now for 70 years and how beautiful that is and how beautiful it is to rejoice in that. That is an other energy which is so important in meditation. So these three components, metta, karuna, mudita, and then that will lead to upeka to this evenness of mind, to um, being connected to things, being in touch with things, but not being caught up in them, not being overwhelmed by them. Right, I hope that um, is a little introduction for this special occasion. It's not just a normal meta retreat that we do. It's a meta retreat where we grow these qualities within ourselves. 
um, encourage them within ourselves through inspiration, through the right guidance and through the right um, imaginations also. Imagination is something which is very important. If we can't imagine things, if we can't um, get a feeling for those beautiful qualities, then it is very, very difficult sometimes to evoke them in our hearts. Unless we have, as I said, very good exemplar, exemplars, <laughs> or whatever the word is, people who um, are an example to the world and an example uh, for us, an inspiration, then we can much more easily develop these qualities. And then the gratitude part, the thankfulness part also. And then what leads to Upeka, just looking on with a deep understanding, with, with uh, wisdom, which is one of the ultimate goals of this path. But it always comes with the other things. If it is a hard wisdom, if it is a learned wisdom that doesn't have the experience, then, um, yeah, <laughs> it doesn't really work. It's not really wisdom. It's more a knowledge at that stage. Okay, enough talking. Let us practice together. Let us do a guided uh, meta meditation. I'll guide you through those steps. I do like to work with pictures and with imagination, so please, um, you know, take it in, see if that is something which um, resonates with you, which makes sense for you. If, if not, you can just do your own meta meditation, or please feel free to, to build on whatever guidance. I'm giving you. So it is a way to kindle those qualities and they do need different objects, different um, um, concepts for people to be able to kindle that feeling. So to settle into our meditation, please let your eyes gently close. If that is something you are not used to, it's okay to keep them slightly open. But during meditation we are not looking outside into the world. We are looking inside. We are connecting with our body and our mind with the mental world and the physical world, but from the inside out. And then just let your breathing be deep for maybe three breaths or so to calm down a little bit and settle in. And then let whatever has happened in the past, a long time ago or just a couple of minutes before starting this session, let it slip away.
and whatever will be happening or you plan to do in the future let that go as well meditation is time to rest time to recuperate time to bring up some energy and joy relaxation and ease and as you're letting your awareness falling back onto your body see how it feels how do you know you've got a body what is the actual experience of having a body and then ask your body body is there anything I can do to make you feel more relaxed to make you more at ease and instead of guessing or thinking that you know just listen listen with kindness and compassion and adjust checking in with your face your eyes your cheeks and then also your mouth and with the jaw relaxing and easing any tension you might find there not by interfering but by caring and by letting go checking in with your neck and then all the way down your spine down 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 all the way to your buttocks
caring. Soothing. Relaxing. Same thing with your shoulders. Letting them hang loose. With an open chest so you can breathe easily and freely. Extending down your arms. Your elbows, your lower arms, all the way into your hands and fingers. down to your belly and all the organs inside of your body caring for them sending them lots of kindness sending them lots of metta Meta and care. And then let us move to our legs. Your upper parts of the legs first of all, feeling them from the inside out, asking them if they need to adjust it in any way. and letting them deeply relax. Moving to the knees. And over the knees to the lower parts of your legs. Feeling them, caring for them. Unconditionally being with them. Just being with them in a way that they can feel at ease. And then moving into the feet, the 
backs of the feet, the soles of the feet. All the way to the toes. Please don't forget when you meditate to be kind to your body first of all. Don't jump into the meditation too quickly. Feel your body, care for your body so it can relax and feel at ease. And then let us move to the imagination part where we work with our minds. Imagine or remember a place where you feel completely at ease. Where you feel safe. Sheltered and protected. A place where you don't have to perform. A place where you don't have to be anybody. No playing roles. No trying to please someone or something. A place where you can truly relax and just hang out. Might be a place in nature. Might be a place in your home. Might be a holiday destination. It might be a cave, like for Ajahn Brahm, tucked away, hidden away, far away from everything. An oasis of peace. Of stillness. of ease. See if you can fill in the details. Is 
Is it cool? Is it warm? Are you sitting down or lying down or floating? Make this experience as real as possible. And as you are hanging out in that place, you start to become aware that there is an other being with you there. A being which is full of compassion full of kindness and care. Full of wisdom and understanding. And you're perceiving this being as a radiant light. No need to give it a name. But if it is something that helps you can imagine that it is a deva, that it is the Buddha himself, that it is a spiritually highly attained being, a teacher, a friend, And as it is Ajahn Brahm's birthday, you can, if you wish, imagine that you're in the presence of Ajahn Brahm. Feel the radiance, the warmth that comes from this being of light. So you are bathed in this light. You are showered by this light. You are surrounded by it. And let it first of all 
melt away any tensions that might still be left in your body. Let it warm you and melt away any coldness or hardness or harshness. Anywhere in your physical being. and let it seep in deeper and deeper from all sides seeping and drenching your body in that light from the outside in. See if you can drench your whole being. So no cell of your body is untouched by this beautiful energy and light. And as you are breathing in and breathing out, you're breathing in this beautiful light. And as you're breathing out, you're spreading it from the inside out. Again, reaching all the lost little corners, crevices of your body. Breathing in kindness and compassion. And as you breathe out, spreading it around in your whole body.
And as you're doing this practice, you will realize that it doesn't just touch your body. It also touches, bathes, and drenches your mind, your mental states, your mental world. easing all the mental tensions the pains, the concerns, the fears the inequality <laughs> when we don't feel that we can live up to our own or other expectations melting all these things away easing them and radiating this beautiful light of kindness and care to all the corners of your mind especially the ones that are tucked away and are left in darkness flooding them with light showering them with kindness And as you have surrounded, embraced and filled up yourself with these beautiful qualities, you are now this radiant being. You are now this light that effortlessly shines into the world. Up and down and all around. Let the energy of kindness and care flow in all directions.
And wherever you are practicing now, let it radiate to the beings which are closest to you. Meditating with you in that group or part of your household, part of your monastery, part of the apartment you live in. Let the energy be freely shared. from your heart to all the hearts of the beings around you. Human beings, animals, mind-made beings, And as you are sharing this energy, you're not being depleted of it. You're rather generating even more. And then as we are all meditating together on this global meta retreat, visualize the whole globe in front of you with a lot of tiny little specks distributed all around the world. which are the people meditating together during those days of metta for Ajahn Brahm's 70th birthday. And as those lights are rippling out in all directions. They are starting to join forces. They're starting to link up with each other, to flow into each other and to become this strong tsunami of metta radiating around the whole globe. From country to country across mountain ranges over the oceans all the way to the poles
gradually, gradually, the whole planet is covered, is bathed is showered with this beautiful energy of Metta, of Karuna, kindness and care. And may this energy bring health, happiness, a feeling of safety, understanding and wisdom into this world. And let us now return from this expansiveness back to the speck of light in our own hearts. Let us generate gratitude. And then let us share our practice today. With our loved ones. Let us also share our merits with all the guides, all the spiritual guides in our life. And especially on this occasion with our spiritual guide Ajahn Brahm. Wishing him all the best. Wishing that he may be free from sickness and afflictions. Wishing him happiness. Sending our care and our kindness back to him. Offering it as a gift. Just like the Buddha said, it's much better 
to offer our practice instead of offering material things out of gratitude towards our teachers and our guides. And before we emerge from our meditation together, let us reflect on how we feel now. To understand what the causes and conditions are for peace, happiness, relaxation to arise. Allow yourself to arrive back in your body, maybe wiggling your toes and your hands a little bit, stretching your spine. And then allowing your eyes to gently open and reconnect with the world around you. With joint palms, we are wishing Ajahn Brahm a wonderful birthday and many years to come with happiness, health and ease. Thank you for your practice.